Hello, this is Onia. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating why I believe that the original order of the Hebrew alphabet was slightly different. Now, this may not seem like an important issue, uh, but by the end of this video, you will see that how it can be important. So basically, the Hebrew alphabet has 22 letters. And it starts with Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, and then it goes all you know it goes all the way through the alphabet to the end, Aleph to Tav. Now the Hebrew alphabet is the origin of the original alphabet for Greek and Latin, and all the languages that descend from Greek and Latin have those same have those same alphabets, uh, th their alphabets are derived from the Greek and the Latin. So that means they're indirectly derived from the Hebrew alphabet, or as the scholars say, the Phoenician alphabet. But the Phoenician language and the Hebrew language were essentially identical for all practical purposes. So no, they, they were merely different dialects, Phoenician and the Hebrew. Use the same letters, uh, same alphabet. Now, the Hebrew alphabet has a striking correspondence in the order of letters with the later alphabets. Like, so for instance, the, the English alphabet today, we have A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D, E. Well, in the, in the Greek alphabet, we have A, B, G, D, E, or alpha, beta, Gamma, Delta, and uh, whatever the other one was, I forget. Epsilon, I think it is. Uh, so you're seeing that the, the letters are all the same in, from between Greek and English, and the same thing occurs in Latin. Uh, in Hebrew, the Hebrew corresponds with the Greek and the English. It's Aleph. Bet, Gimel, Dalet, He, or in other words, A, B, G, D, E, the same as the Greek and essentially the same as the English, except the English has a C in the place of a G. And then there's a few letters slightly mixed up uh, in the English compared to the Hebrew. But afterwards, what we see is we see K, L, M, N, O, P, Q R S T. That's the English alphabet right there. And we see that essential same order in the Greek alphabet. It's, it's the exact same order with like one extra letter in between there. And what do we see for Hebrew? We see the same exact thing with a couple extra letters in between. So we have in the Hebrew, we have. Uh, Kaf, then Lamet, Mem, Nun, so right there, K, K, L, M, N. Then we have Samek, which corresponds with the C, or however you say that. Uh, it's a Greek letter, and the Greek letter is in the same exact spot where the Hebrew letter is here. So the Greek is derived from the Hebrew in this instance. But so, so we have Samak next in between uh, after N, but then comes O, the equivalent of Hebrew, uh, the Hebrew O, which is Ayin. It looks like exactly like an O in the original Paleo Hebrew script, and then after it comes Pei, and it is the correspondent to our letter P, and then comes a, a letter called Sadi which the Greek alphabet originally had, but later on the Greek alphabets removed that letter. But so there was Sadi, and then immediately after Sadi in the Hebrew alphabet, there was Kof with a Q, Resh, Shin, and Tav. And those correspond, those Hebrew letters correspond to the English Q-R-S-T. So you see that the alphabet of English is directly 
connected and corresponding with the Hebrew alphabet. But, um, oh, and, and one other thing is the original letters that the Hebrew alphabet was written in were much similar to what English looks like and what the Greek alphabet looks like than the later Hebrew script that most Jews use today. Uh, it's called the Paleo-Hebrew. That's what the original Hebrew was written in. And so, I have discovered, using other scholars as a source of information, I wasn't the one who suggested this idea, but it has greatly resonated with me uh, from reading what other scholars had to say about this. And basically, I have found evidence that was compiled by these people that the letters ayin and pe, in other words, the ones that chorus, the letters that correspond to o and p in the English language, those letters, there is evidence that the original order of those letters was pe, then ayin. So in other words, p and then o, not o then p. So it should be in English, it should have been. K L M N P O instead of O P. So uh, now, what's the evidence for this? So first of all, to give some information here, I'm going to read this slight quotation here from some scholars, which talk about uh, which talk about the alphabet of the Hebrew language found in ancient artifacts uh, that date before our copies of the Bible, long before our copies of the Bible. So here's what this says. In 1976, a potsherd was discovered at Izbet Sarta in western Samaria, dating to about 1200 BCE. The potsherd had five lines of Hebrew writing on it, one of which was in Abbasidary, an inscription of the letters of the alphabet in order. In this Abbasidary, the Pe preceded the Ayin. There is a scholarly consensus that Izbet Sarta was an Israelite settlement in this period. During excavations in 1975 to 1976 in the northeast Sinai, a jar fragment was discovered that included three Hebrew abecedaries in which the Pe preceded the Ayin. The site dates to approximately 800 BCE. In 2005, a Hebrew abecedary inscribed on a stone was discovered at Tel Zayet, a site north of Lachish. The stone had been used in the construction of a wall belonging to a tenth century BCE structure. This abecedary also followed the order of pay preceding Ayan. Most probably, Tel Zayat was part of the area of the tribe of Judah in the 10th century BCE. In recent years, another ostracon with three Hebrew abecedaries with pay preceding Ayan has come to light. Its provenance is unknown, but the writing can be dated to the late 7th or early 6th century BCE. Supposedly, it was found in the debris of the Temple Mount. The abbasidaries mentioned above are the only ones that have been discovered in ancient Israel that date from the period of the Judges and the First Temple, and that span the letters Ayan and Pe. Pe precedes Ayan in every one. As we have seen, these abbasidaries come from different regions in ancient Israel, not merely from one limited area. All of this suggests that Pe preceding Ayan was the original order in ancient Israel. So that right there is pretty compelling. Basically what it's telling us is, without exception, every single copy of the alphabet in Hebrew Preceding the year 600 BC, every single alphabet inscription that was found that, that listed out the alphabet or parts of the alphabet 
always listed in the same order, pay first and then item, P first and then O, always without exception in every single artifact inscription that has been found, predating the destruction of the first temple. So that's a pretty compelling piece of evidence to suggest that the original was in fact the pay iron order. Another compelling piece of evidence to this is that in the Book of Lamentations, it has five chapters. Four of those chapters are what are called acrostics. It's a poem that's alphabetic in order. So the first verse is the first letter of the alphabet, the second verse is the second letter of the alphabet, and so on and so forth, through the Hebrew alphabet all the way to the end, which is 22 letters, so 22 verses. In the first chapter only of the four first chapters, which are acrostic chapters in Lamentations, in the first chapter only, it has the original order, I in first, then pay. But in chapters 2, 3, and 4, it has a flip order. Uh, it has pay, and then I am. You can look this up in any Hebrew copy of the Book of Lamentations. And often the English translations will uh, indicate this as well. So why is it pay then I am in these three chapters? And why is it different in the first chapter? Well, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, there's a cop there are some copies of the Book of Lamentations, and in the first chapter in the Dead Sea Scrolls, it had the flipped order as well. So this evidence seems strong to suggest that the original of the first four chapters of Lamentations were all in the order of pay ayin. And then later on, scribes altered the first chapter to fix it, fix it, to update it, to correct it to the correct order of the Hebrew alphabet. But they did not correct or edit the, well, the latter three chapters, chapters two to four, so they're still in that switched order. Pay and I am. And there'd be really there's not much motivation to change the order like that. Why would they why would the writer of Lamentations change the order to pay and I am unless it's a legitimate order that the author recognized and approved of? And so we also see evidence in the book of Proverbs. In Proverbs chapter 31 of the of the section about a good wife it's an acrostic and in this acrostic in the hebrew copies of the masoretic text the one that most english translations are translated from it has i in first then pay but in the septuagint version of that section which uh, uh, of the book of proverbs the septuagint version was very different and it preserves that chapter in the book of proverbs but in a it has the pay in the reversed order. So why would the scribe change from the Masoretic, the normal order, to a bizarre order that no one was really using anymore? Uh, it doesn't make sense. Uh, what, what makes more sense is that the original of the Book of Proverbs was pay first, then iron, and then later scribes edited it because it was in the wrong order. So they decided to correct it to the, to the correct order. Of the Hebrew alphabet, but so it's just there is some is some compelling evidence. The Bible uses these reversed uh, the reversed order, and all these ancient uh, artifacts use the reverse order. Now there are acrostics in the Dead Sea Scrolls and in the Bible text of the Old Testament which have the regular order I and pay. And why is this? Well, there could be two reasons. One is the original order. Uh, was pay than iron, but that scribes changed it as well. Or it's possible that there were two competing orders. That's most likely the case. There were two competing orders, and that King David decided to use uh, to use the the common one that people were familiar with, the one that Aramaic. Uh, so I would say the the iron pay order is the Aramaic order, and that King David decided to use the one that was more familiar with the people. Uh, just like in the book of Daniel, it uses Aramaic as well in some sections. So, now, one could ask, okay, maybe, maybe pay iron is the original order, but who cares? It's not a big deal. It doesn't, 
it's not a significant issue. But it is actually the case that I, I've found that so much with scripture that even the smallest little detail can make a big impact, a big splash. You know, you throw a little small rock into a body of water, it can make a, a huge ripple effect. And so the issue of whether or not pay should come first is a significant issue because it gets into uh, issues of textual criticism or theories of scholars that, like for instance, I just read this article earlier today, which makes the argument that because the first chapter of the Book of Lamentations differs from the latter three chapters, chapters two to four, in the order of ayin and pay, or pay and ayin, since the two differ, the guy argues, so this proves that this was not written by a single author, but that at least two authors wrote this book. And that's just very naive because it misunderstands the ability, the, the level of scribes, uh, the extent that scribes are willing to rearrange passages to fix the text. This is a common thing among scribes for many different writings. You see it so many times where there are clearly corrections made to try to, in their understanding, fix it to make it the correct reading. And so to conclude that the Book of Limitations was not written by Jeremiah because because it has too much of a difference between the first being in the regular order of the alphabet and the latter three being in a different order, to conclude that that proves that it's not written by Jeremiah, well, that's silly because the Dead Sea Scrolls prove that the first chapter of the Book of Lamentations in the original order was Pei and then Ayin. So this guy's article is completely ignorant of the Dead Sea Scrolls uh, being the original version of first K and then I am. It's just a strong piece of evidence that blows out of the water this guy's speculation based on his own ignorance. Or maybe it was a her. Uh, I don't remember. But So in either case... This is just one example of many applications we can use of this small little detail of pay coming first uh, and then I am following after. It indicates to us the depth of textual changes and alterations that the scribes are willing to go. So there's just there's a lot of there's a lot of amazing things that we can learn from this switched order, I think, uh, of the alph alphabet. Now, it's not like absolutely essential information that if you don't know it, then you're going to go to hell or something, but it's a very valuable piece of information that can help you protect other people from going astray and rejecting the truth because of some errors such as these. Because a lot of people reject the Bible because they see errors and inconsistencies like this. So, when they are, when people are formed adequately, there will be less excuse and less motivation for them to walk away from the faith. Uh, so that's the significance, and therefore it, it, it's a very important detail and issue of which is first. So that's my uh, understanding of the switched order. So I hope you enjoy this video and are convinced that pay-in is the original order. Thank you, and so long.